Hi everyone, so this is uh, my video on financial analysis part 1 Okay, so I'm Will Dichia and you have been you're watching this on my YouTube channel So this video is des designed and developed for a very specific purpose That is to address the issue with how do you perform a simple financial analysis Right, I have uh, ever taught students who are doing this at degree level, diploma level and the common uh, problem with many of these students is that they do not understand that uh, how how do they apply the ratios and then put these together into a simple analysis or a simple report for the purpose of the assignment right and it's also worrying sometimes when uh, students you know or even um, undergraduates when they perform their analysis they have no understanding about what they are analyzing and uh, many a time this results in very poor quality work which becomes very difficult to assess well it took me quite a while to you know to decide to want to do this video because seeing the amount of uh, misunderstanding from students you know about this topic and how to do this properly then that made me felt very motivated to start developing this video Right, <clears throat> but it's not meant to address any specific program. So, but uh, if you need to understand how this is done for your course or program, then you have to check your respective syllabus. Right. So, uh, we'll start with the introduction, and then we go to the main course, which is how to approach a simple example and write up some analysis. Right, maybe a simple report. Uh, the next thing that we'll go through is the common pitfalls. Common pitfalls are like the common problems that students face which are which are completely avoidable but then it's due to perhaps a poor understanding that these problems arise. Then we are going to a closure. <coughs> now my approach to this uh to to this presentation is that I like uh to look at it as a very practical subject, right? And the way we analyze figures should result in an output which is understandable to anyone like for example if I'm the analyst and I have presented uh, I've done certain analysis you know and then I put it into writing this piece of work must be readily understood by someone else right because any form of analysis which doesn't make sense to someone else is not analysis it's just rubbish right so what is financial analysis okay this is a core subject or core component of various uh, accounting and finance programs. The calculation aspect of it is quite simple, right? When I say the calculation, I'm referring to the ratio calculations. The ratio calculations are extremely simple, they are hardly challenging. In fact, uh, if you have the formula sheet, you can perform any kind of ratio calculation readily. Now the tough part is, how do you put these numbers together and interpret them and make good sense out of them, right? And that's the tough part, putting all this understanding into writing. And for many students, <coughs> when they do not have that understanding, the writing becomes rubbish. Right? So, this is the important issue to address. And we will, I'm going to go through a very simple demonstration on how this is done and explain what are the required elements to include for an acceptable piece of writing, or in this case, the report. Now, and of course, as I mentioned to you before, this presentation is not designed to address any specific syllabus or program. You should consult your respective syllabus if you need to know what the requirements. Right? So, on to the main course. So this is the example that I'm going to use. The example here is um, a very simple one. We have the statement of comprehensive income and to sum the profit and loss account right, for a two-year period. Now a proper analysis and one which is meaningful will require at least two years of comparative figures. right? You won't be able to tell how well the business has done if you do not have comparative figures. Comparative figures are absolutely essential. Right? 
and you won't be able to make sense out of the numbers without comparative figures. Right? You could use benchmarks like um, industry averages, you know, and then you perform an analysis. That's possible. But in my case, I'm using, you know, the, uh, two years to compare, right? So two, uh, two years of results from the same business, right? And here you can see I have the sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit margins. And you can observe that the gross profit margins have improved, right? And part of the reason is because there were more sales, right? With more sales, then obviously the margin should be better. Cost of goods sold have came down, right? From 8,000 to now you have 8,000, right? Probably because uh, there were some cheaper source of goods, or perhaps uh, if the business has diversified into selling lower uh, quality goods, for instance, right? Which we can't really tell because these headings don't give any details. So you can't tell what kind of goods have been sold. You can't tell what type of uh, product or services are being sold. Are these high-end goods? Are these uh, high-end services? You can't tell at all. Right? That's where um, meaningful analysis means that you have to be able to obtain certain background information. Right? But my example, I have no background information, which means that I will have to do a lot of uh, guesswork, a lot of assumptions have to be made so that I can perform the analysis. Notice that most of the operating costs are constant. Right? Rentals are quite stable. Right? Not much changes probably means that the business has been operating at the same location. Rentals went up slightly. Salary costs are slightly higher. Right? Does that make sense? Maybe because revenues are higher probably due to more uh, man hours incurred, more man hours being used to sell the goods. Right? Bonuses are higher. Does it make sense to you? Probably because with more margins being achieved, it means that you know, there is also a high likelihood that staff are being rewarded with bonuses right, for the good performance of the business. Depreciation, quite constant. Right? Nothing too surprising. Okay. And next. Right, the profit before interest and tax, however, has varied quite a lot. Why? Overheads, operating expenses are stable, but notice that the contributing factor to this profit before interest and tax being higher is because of the gross margins. Notice that the gross margins have increased by 1,006. Because gross margins have increased by 1,006, that translates to higher profit before interest and tax. Right. Finance costs, more or less quite stable. Taxation, of course, these vary according to profitability. Right. Then therefore, net income on overall also higher than the previous year. Right. And we understand why net incomes are higher because of the higher gross margins. High gross margins means that the business is able to generate greater profits right, while maintaining operating costs. Right, that's quite easy to understand. Now, <coughs> we also have the statement of financial position. The statement of financial position is quite useful. It shows the assets and liabilities. Analysis you have certain analysis like for example in terms of gearing, in terms of liquidity, how's the business like? Okay. Non-current assets remain hmm, okay has actually increased slightly by about ten percent. Eleven thousand to about twelve thousand four hundred. So that's about a ten percent increase. Right. Okay, there can be many reasons for this. It could be for the purpose of increasing capacity or maybe replacement of whole equipment for instance. Inventory have fallen slightly. Receivables have fallen slightly as well. Right. Now these are interesting signs because a decrease in receivables actually may be indicative of efficient collection processes. Right. 
perhaps debtors are not allowed to delay payment as long as they wanted to, right? And perhaps the business has been more aggressive in collection processes, right? So those are possible reasons. Cash and cash equivalents have decreased by 80, right? It's not a very big decrease. <coughs> Moving on, in terms of liabilities, long-term liabilities have increased, right? So this may be indicative of greater dependence on debt financing, right? Current liabilities remain more or less quite close from year to year, right? You only observe a slight increase of about 3 over 100, right? Or rather, to be more exact, 344, okay? So, as you go through the figures, make sure that you know you have some sense of what each number is trying to tell you, right? From year to year, right? Before you even start with the ratio calculation, so at least, you know, now you have a general sense of what the numbers are, right? So this surely helps because now that we have observed the numbers from one year to another, we can go on and perform the calculations, yes, and this is important, right? So based on the statement of comprehensive income and the statement of financial position that I had presented just now, right, and then I perform the calculation elsewhere, you know, before I started preparing this video. So according to, the, to my calculations that I did earlier on, these are the following figures, gross margins from 2014, and then I have some figures from 2013, some ratios from 2013, right? Now, <coughs> what ratios should you calculate, right? I'm sure you know you probably have this question like, how do I know that these are the numbers or these are the formulas to apply and calculate. Okay, it depends. If you are taking an exam, chances are you might be, you know, told which ratios have to be calculated. Now, if it happens to be an open-ended report writing, right, an assignment that you bring home, no, then it can be a bit different, right? Exams would be very specific, and I can imagine that for report writing, it can be a bit unclear. Right. Also, depending on what course you are doing, right. So, the rule here is that do not try to, you know, uh, do not overkill in terms of the ratio calculations. Don't try to calculate all of the ratios, right. In the exams, it's very simple. It's specific, so you just calculate whatever that is required. But if it is a report writing. Okay, simple. Just be very selective. Simple. Just be very selective. Right. Look through your formula list and decide which are the pressing ones that you want to calculate and analyze. Simple. Right. And my other point is that not all need to be analyzed. You do not need to go through every single item and start to explain why each of them has changed because if you go through all items and try to explain what each one of them has varied, you know, how has each one changed then your report will be extremely long and extremely difficult to read right so my point is be selective right think through which ones you want to go through and which ones are more you know pressing to describe okay so I'm going to show you how I will do this. Okay, by my, my approach may not be the best, right? So it's just an, a general approach. You might have a slightly different point of view about this. So what I'll do is, right? So I'm going to pick certain ratios that I'm going to, uh, what you call that, analyze, okay? And, well, in the exam, like I mentioned before, it will be specific, so that you don't really have to worry like what to calculate. So it's the report that is worrying, right? Which ones to pick? So let me just show you how I pick. The gross margins have varied by 7%. So it's important to explain why the gross margins have changed. Right. Because if you are a shareholder of the company and you notice the gross margins have changed, the next thing that you'll be concerned about is what has the business done to get higher margins? Right. So this is interesting to examine. What about operating expenses to the sales? Hey, this is constant. It may not be so relevant to you know talk much about it. 
net margins have increased by 6%. Okay, this is deserving of some, you know, uh, analysis, some interpretation. Inventory turnover has gone higher. This is worth explaining. Inventory turnover period, actually, these two can be grouped together and you explain them together. Right? Receivable collection period. This is very significant and all the more you should, you know, put some words about it. Payable payment period. Now, the payable payment period can be a bit tricky to calculate because it depends on whether you have enough information on what type of payables are there. But in my example, I have not been very specific about what payables are there. So therefore, this becomes nothing, right? Unless I give an info to say that, you know, um, the payables pertain to goods or the payables pertain to overheads, and this is something that you can calculate. But now, as of for my example, I, I don't have any assumptions on this, right? So this wouldn't be relevant. Interest cover, interesting. Interest cover has doubled. Okay, this is worth looking through. Gearing has increased a lot, 9%, worth explaining. Inventory turnover, okay, the change is very slight. So we might want to pass that, right? Okay, ROE is significantly higher, it's worth explaining about it. Okay, the rest seems fine. Then what about uh, current ratio and asset test? We might explain this together. This is worth talking about. Okay, good. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to put some words to explain, right? And let's go on to gross margins. Let's start with how do we interpret, okay? The analysis, or what I call the insights. Okay, when we talk about analysis or report writing, it's important to, you know, break down your analysis into maybe a series of a few sections, depending on your report requirements right in my case I have chosen four different aspects right this is like what the textbook would normally do you know four different aspects profitability liquidity solvency and efficiency now in terms of profitability what have we observed about the business right now one thing for sure that you must explain is that the revenues have increased Right, so in your report, you might want to start with a statement like, okay, revenues have increased. And what else have also changed at the same time? So did the gross profit margins. The gross profit margins also likewise have increased. So that is your opening statement. Right? Now with that, then you have set the ground to talk more about the, the company from uh, how it has performed from year to year. Now what else did we uh, notice just now? Because the margins have also improved, right, expenses remain constant. What has happened as a result? Net profits increased, right? That was what we realized because we greater margins but constant expenses or expenses that didn't increase a lot, net profits as a result has improved significantly. So you notice through these few statements that I made regarding profitability, I already have the first paragraph of my report writing. Of course, uh, it depends on uh, how many marks are you allocated. It also depends on the word limit. So depending on the word limit, you might want to go on and explain further, no? like uh, why the revenues have increase why would revenues increase if you are given more marks then you should actually spend some time to explain why revenues have increased is it because of greater volume of sales or is it because of increases in selling price so these are possible contributing factors because with high selling price or increase in selling price that definitely means that you know you'll be generating more revenues than before right so that's done and depending on my allocation and the word limit you may even go further to talk about the gross margins but how come the gross margins have improved so significantly because according to my calculation gross margins increase from 37% to 44% that is a drastic increase of 7% 
why is it that gross margins have increased so significantly? So you may mention that because there was a decline in cost of goods sold. Cheaper goods, but higher price means that you earn higher margins. Right? So that addresses the profitability aspect. But you, you have to vary your length of the writing so that that fits your assignment or exam requirements. Right? That's very simple. That does it for paragraph 1. I'm going to explain to you how to do, go on to the next portion, right, which is liquidity. Now, how do we describe or interpret liquidity? Not very difficult. Let's come to this. Right, liquidity. So, obviously, you notice that there are two ratios here that pertains to liquidity. Right, current ratio, which fell from 0.67 to 0.47, as the test fell from 0.61 to 0.43. Now, what actually cause this change. Observe. Current assets in the first place had fallen by 7 approximately. Liabilities fell current liabilities on the other on the other hand didn't fall, it increased by 300. Right? And part of the reasons why current liability has increased is because there were more payables. Right? However, Current assets fell significantly because there were less receivables. Okay, so let's go on and put some s statements on liquidity. Right. So you can mention here that in terms of liquidity, the current ratio fell. Is there any concern with that? Yes, there are some concerns because we would be concerned about whether there is sufficient liquidity. Do you think that there is sufficient liquidity? There's a high chance that it may not be sufficient, right? Especially given that the current ratio fell from 0.67 to 0.47. That is drastic, right? That is 0.2 change. The asset test also likewise fell. Okay? So there is definitely a potential risk of inadequate liquidity right so then you can go on and explain why, why is it that it's a concern because if there is inadequate liquidity what will happen would the business be able to service it pay out its creditors on time would the business be able to pay out its short-term liabilities so these are potential problems depending on the length of your you know essay then you may even explain all these okay so potential this what about solvency okay so what we observe here is that gearing has increased by 9% now that is worrying right we have observed that the gearing has increased by 9% right is it 9% yeah, but it is 23% to 32, that gives you 9%. Right. It has increased by 9%, and what does it tell you? Right. It basically tells you that there is more dependence on debt. Now, when there is more dependence on debt, the effect of this is that there is also more credit risk. Credit risk refers to the risk that the business may eventually have difficulty paying up whatever that it has borrowed. Right, which is a potential problem. Okay, you may even expand a bit more about the gearing by saying that because the business chose to take on that instead of using equity finance. Yeah, we can explain that too. Okay, so depending on the length of your writing, then you know you vary the uh, number of points, right, and the number of uh, words that you use. So that gives you one, two, and three. Going on to four. What about in terms of efficiency? Right, you can talk a little bit about uh, the efficiency in terms of like the stock turn. Stock turn is definitely much better than the previous year. Right. What could it, this be due to? Right. Stock turn is also short. It's good to explain it's short term. Collection is also shorter, so the chance of greater efficiency. Mention a bit about like the inventory, you know, the inventory turn being shorter. What does it mean? 
does it mean that there is more efficiency in terms of stock management? Right, definitely is uh, indicative of efficiency in terms of stock management. Right, and the collection periods. These are shorter, but what do you think about it? Is it for the better? Of course it is. Because this means that there is also lesser risk of bad debts. Alright? So, notice that uh, by looking through the series of ratios, I managed to come up with four paragraphs or four sections of items which you can readily put together and that gives you a good one-page analysis. Right. Did I have to go through every single ratio to come up with this four sets of points? I didn't have to. I didn't have to go through all, every single one of the ratios. I didn't need to. What I did was that I simply selected the ratios that were more relevant. And what I did was that taking out those ratios that are more relevant, break them down into four parts, and that becomes very simple before writing. Okay, the pitfall obviously is that some people tend to have very poor writing skills. Right. That results in very unclear expression. Some students ever have written higher, better. No. Statements like this higher better doesn't tell the reader much about what you understand. Right? You have to explain why. Okay? Like why is it higher results in better? Is it because higher results in better margins? Right. And also try to relate to the financial figures. Make use of the financial figures to complete your essay. Right? Avoid going through every single one of the ratio. Focus. Pick the ones that are more relevant and explain them. Another issue, an obvious lack of understanding. Obviously, if you don't understand what you are calculating, you won't be able to write properly. That's obvious. Right? Please understand what you're writing before you put it you know, into your final piece of work. Lack of checking. Many a time I have uh, came across uh, pieces of work submitted, but they are poor, poorly prepared because there is no checking process. I have students who can give uh, incorrect calculations, and those are avoidable problems. Okay, right. So make it a point to check and closure. So financial analysis basically aims to interpret, decipher the figures you know, from the financial report. So that really is what it's all about. It's not just calculating a series of ratio and that's it. It's also the interpretation which is very, very important. Right? So even when you know you have done your interpretation, it doesn't mean that th these are free from errors and fraud. Right? Note that all these figures are always susceptible or prone to manipulation. So you have to be very careful, right? Very careful in discerning uh, the numbers in the annual report, okay? And uh, to close off finally, there is no such thing as someone who is lousy and can't do the work. The honest truth is that there is really such a thing as someone complacent and not trying hard enough, right? And to those students that I've ever taught don't think that you have been failed before by, you know, that I failed you before and you're no good. But really, it's, it's back to the question of have you been too complacent and that you have not understood what you are writing. Okay, because any piece of work, especially in terms of this topic, right, if you do not understand and you try to present something that you don't understand, it becomes very obvious. Right? And the same goes for students taking this, you know, for their ACCA. Right, make sure that you understand the ratios, then write it down, right? And that's important because in the exam, especially for ACCA, what examiners are looking for, and also the same for myself when I mark, 
I look for this thing called understanding. Right? Only when you are able to demonstrate understanding, then you get appropriately rewarded for your efforts. Right? Okay, so I hope that uh, you know through this I have shared with you my point of view as a marker and I have shared with you uh, you know what would be critical to your success in the exams or maybe in whichever area of study you are at. Okay, so I'm Rodi Chia and thank you for watching this. This is uh, you are watching this on my YouTube channel. Thank you and look forward to hearing from you soon.